Hello everybody and welcome. Whenever sci-fi shows, books, or video games turn their eyes to space, they always have an abundance of starships. Star Wars, Star Trek, The Expanse, Dead Space, and No Man's Sky. Halo is no different. The UNSC has eight designations of ships. Carriers, cruisers, frigates, destroyers, corvettes, battleships, prowlers, and colony ships. Today we're going to go over each designation and subclass. This should give us a full picture of the UNSC Navy. We'll go over size, armaments, and a brief explanation of how they were used. We're going to start with the big boys. The Orion class assault carrier entered service in 2473. They had a length of 7,284 feet, or 2,220 meters. They had a mass of 40 million tons, and they were fitted with two MAC cannons, 70 Archer missile pods, and 12 Rampart Point defense guns. They were built for war against human insurrectionists, specifically designed to help the UNSC sustain ground operations and maintain air superiority over contested worlds. They often led battle groups and were a symbol of the UNSC military strength. During the Human Covenant War, these ships were often flagships. The war saw most of these ships being destroyed, as the crews would often sacrifice themselves to buy civilians time, in stark contrast to their original purpose. The Epoch class heavy carrier entered service in 2475. They had a length of 8,409 feet or 2,563 meters, and they had a mass of 35 million tons. They were fit with one Mac cannon, 12 Sentry auto turrets, 20 Bident missile pods, 80 Archer missile pods, 12 Rampart point defense guns, and 20 Helix point defense gun. These ships, just like the Orion class, were used in the Insurrection and the Covenant Wars. They were able to provide ground support and air cover. The Punic class supercarrier entered service in 2490. They had a length of 13,123 feet or 4,000 meters. They had a mass of 670 tons, nearly 20 times that of the Epoch. They were fitted with two MAC cannons, 15 coil gun batteries, 100 Archer missile pods, 20 Howler missile pods, 80 Scythe anti aerospace turrets, and 100 Fortress Point defense guns. It was designed to help the UNSC against the insurrection. These massive ships transported and sustained entire military campaigns. In the Human Covenant War, they participated in many battles, including the UNSC's last stand over Estuary and Charybdis 9. By the end of the Human Covenant War, only a handful were left. The UNSC Tafelagar was the flagship for the Epsilon Eridani fleet over Reach. It wouldn't survive the fall of Reach. The Poseidon class light carrier entered service shortly after the Human Covenant War ended in 2553. They had a length of 2,359 feet or 719 meters, and they only had a mass of about 2.8 million tons. They were fitted with two Archer missile pods, two MAC turrets, and two Rampart Point defense guns. They were relatively light and cheap to manufacture, making them ideal for the UNSC in a post-war ravaged civilization. They only needed a small crew and were easily manufactured on Mars and Jupiter. Now for the big boy itself, the Infinity class. The Infinity also entered service in 2553. It had a length of 18,682 feet or 5,694 meters. It had a mass of 907 million tons. It has four MAC cannons. 350 Archer missile pods, 250 Rapier missile pods, 190 Lance missile pods, 500 Howler missile pods, 10 MAC turrets, 85 Scythe anti-aerospace turrets, and 130 point defense guns. Only one Infinity-class cruiser has ever been built. The Infinity sister ship, the Eternity, had many of her parts taken to repair the Infinity after the conflict on Requiem. The Infinity's main mission was to find, research, and decommission the remaining Halos. Since finding the Master Chief in 2527, they've been a bit busy. I really don't want it to go unsaid just how massive these things are. This thing can carry 10 Strident class heavy frigates. The ship is so big that it can carry 10 massive ships. The Valiant class super heavy cruiser entered service in 2493. They had a length of 4,980 feet or 1,518 meters, and they had a mass of 17 million tons. They had two MAC cannons, eight sentry turrets, 50 archer missile pods, and 50 rampart point defense guns. These warships traded armor and weapons for multi-mission capability. The most famous Valiant class was the Everest, the flagship of the legendary Vice Admiral Preston Cole. The Halcyon class light cruiser entered service in 2510. They had one MAC cannon, four Spitfire naval coil gun batteries, 
4 sentry turrets, 20 archer missile pods, and 40 helix point defense guns. The most notable feature of the Halcyons was their series of internal cross bracings and honeycomb structures, making the Halcyons nearly indestructible. They could take a lot of abuse and keep functioning. Deemed costly and unnecessarily strong, they would be destined for the scrap heap. However, the UNSC were losing ships so rapidly during the War with the Covenant that Halcyons were pulled to the front lines. Obviously, the most famous was the Pillar of Autumn. However, it was refitted with numerous upgrades for Operation Red Flag. Titanium A armor plating, a fusion drive system, rapid cycling mech coils, capable of firing three mech rounds, additional archer missile pods, an extended drop bay, an extended hangar, and an upgraded bridge. The Marathon-class heavy cruiser entered service in 2520. They had a length of 3,910 feet, or 1,192 meters. They had a mass of 12 million tons, and they had two MAC cannons, six sentry turrets, 70 archer missile pods, 26 longbow missile pods, and 12 helix point defense guns. They were very popular among the UNSC naval personnel. They served throughout the war with the Covenant. There were several at the Battle of Harvest and the Battle for Earth. The UNSC Leviathan, Vice Admiral Michael Stanford's flagship, served at the Battle of Sigma Octanus IV and the Fall of Reach. The Autumn-class heavy cruiser, named after the Pillar of Autumn, entered service in 2554. They had a length of 4,675 feet, or 1,425 meters. They had a mass of 10.1 million tons, and they have one MAC cannon, four naval Spitfire coil battery guns, six sentry turrets, 32 archer missile pods, and six rampart point defense guns. These were actually built using recycled Halcyon light cruiser hulls. Next, we have the frigates, the heart of the fleet. The Stalwart class light frigate entered service in 2515. They had a length of 1,568 feet or 678 meters. They had a mass of 0.93 million tons and they had one MAC cannon, 16 archer missile pods, 76 street missile pods, six rampart point defense guns, and 52 bulwark point defense guns. The Stalwart class light frigates were of the most prominent classes of frigates in the Human Covenant War. One of the most famous was the In Amber Clad, the only human ship to fight in the Battle of Delta Halo. The Sharon class light frigate entered service in 2520. They had a length of 1,607 feet or 490 meters. They had a mass of 0.65 million tons and they had one MAC cannon, three Hyperion missile silos, 50 Archer missile pods, and 40 Rampart point defense guns. Another ship of high popularity, they had positions in almost all fleets in the UNSC. One of the most famous Sharon class light frigates was the Ford Unto Dawn, which entered the portal over Voy and traveled to the Ark. It would be cut in half by the closing of the portal on its return with Master Chief Petty Officer John 117 aboard the section that got left behind. The Paris class heavy frigate entered service in 2523. They had a length of 1,755 feet or 535 meters. They have a mass of 1.3 million tons and they have one MAC cannon, three Shiva missile silos, 26 Archer missile pods, 12 Rampart point defense guns, and 12 Harpoon nuclear missile silos. The Paris class heavy frigate like the other frigates, were used in abundance throughout the UNSC. They were at the Battle of Chai City 4, the Fall of Reach, and the Battle for Earth. The UNSC Grafton, that shoots the Spire and gets destroyed in Halo Reach, was a Paris class. The Strident class heavy frigate entered service in 2549. They had a length of 1,807 feet or 575 meters. They had a mass of 1.1 million tons and they had one MAC cannon, one Hyperion missile silo, five caster naval coil guns, two archer missile pods, six arena point defense guns, and six rampart point defense guns. The Strident class heavy frigates were used in multiple ways, being convoy escorts or troop transports. These ships were designed late in the Human Covenant War and have seen action in a post-war galaxy. Three Stridents acted as escorts to the UNSC Infinity during the New Phoenix Incident of July 2557.
The Mulsanne e class light frigate entered service in 2553. They had a length of 1,492 feet or 456 meters. They have a mass of 0.9 million tons. They have one Bright Lance compound reflex laser, 20 archer missile pods, and 12 rampart point defense guns. These frigates were the first that were designed in the post-war UNSC. They more closely resemble the Paris and Charon classes in both looks and uses. The Anlace class light frigate entered service in 2555. They have a length of 1,221 feet or 372 meters, and they have a mass of 0.9 million tons. They have one Helios capital scale high energy laser, four Magna capital scale pulse lasers, and eight point defense laser arrays. The Anlace class specializes in support roles, blocking communications and masking UNSC presence in hostile systems. Two of these ships can completely cut off a planet from outside communications. The Diligence class light destroyer entered service in 2433. They had a length of 1,804 feet or 550 meters, and they had a mass of 2.2 million tons. They had one Spitfire naval autocannon turret, six Sentry naval autocannon turrets, 40 Ares missile launchers, and 10 bulwark point defense guns. These ships were primarily used in conflicts with human insurrectionists. By the time the Covenant made first contact, these ships had been retired for decades. However, some were pulled out of storage and used on the front lines. The Hillsborough class heavy destroyers entered service in 2499. They had a length of 1,725 feet or 526 meters, and they had a mass of about 2 million tons. They had one Mack cannon, four Sentry naval autocannons, 56 Ares missile pods, and seven Rampart point defense guns. These ships entered service at the height of the insurrection, and like so many on this list, they would turn their weapons toward the Covenant. In 2525, the Heracles was dispatched to the Epsilon Indy system to investigate the loss of communications with the planet Harvest. The Halberd class light destroyer entered service in 2508. They had a length of 1,591 feet or 485 meters. They had a mass of 1.8 million tons and they had one Mac battery, 26 Archer missile pods, four Rampart point defense guns, and three Shiva nuclear missiles. Early in the war with the Covenant, Halberds were deployed in specialized task forces with a life expectancy measured in weeks. Later in the war, dozens would serve and be destroyed in the fall of Reach. The Mako class Corvette entered service in 2388. They had a length of 532 feet or 162 meters. They had a mass of 28,000 tons. They had two Castor Naval coil guns, two Archer missile pods, and two Rampart Point defense guns. The Mako entered service in 2388 and rapidly became the most ubiquitous example of a Corvette role throughout human space. During its long career, the Mako was used in many military organizations including the UNSC Navy and other security forces throughout the Sol system and extrasolar colonies. The Mako's maintenance issues would eventually gain at infamy in the shipyards where it was serviced, ultimately leading to the UNSC Navy choosing to retire it in the early stages of the Human Covenant War. The Gladius class heavy corvette entered service in 2490. They had a length of 797 feet or 243 meters. They had a mass of 36,000 tons. They had one Mack cannon, two Archer missile pod clusters, and six Rampart point defense guns. During the Human Covenant War, the Gladius class heavy corvette was used by the UNSC Navy in battle groups assigned to the inner colonies. As they were substantially outgunned by most Covenant ships, Gladius class corvettes rarely participated in major fleet engagements. The Vindication class light battleship entered service in 2554. They have a length of 5,183 feet or 1,580 meters, and they had a mass of 12 million tons. They had two Mac batteries, 50 Archer missile pods, 40 Sentry auto cannons, and 20 Rampart point defense guns. At least one Vindication was present in the UNSC Infinity's commissioning ceremony on February 21st, 2557. Part of Battle Group Dakota, several assaulted the Mantle's approach during the Didax attack on Earth in 2557. During the Requiem campaign in early 2558, at least three ships of this class deployed fire teams to the surface in order to find Dr. Catherine Halsey after her abduction at the hands of the Covenant. 
The Razor Class Prowler entered service in 2499. They had a length of 525 feet or 160 meters, and they have a mass of 29,500 tons. They have two Rampart Point defense guns, 12 Shrieker missiles, 8 Argent missiles, and a Fury tactical nuke. In March 2526, Captain Halima Ascot's Razor Class Prowler, the UNSC Starry Knight, led a mission in which 12 Spartan II's boarded a Covenant frigate. The mission ended with the vessel being destroyed and leading to the activation of Operation Silent Storm. A number of Razor Class Prowlers were assigned to Task Force Yama, which would be commanded by Captain Ascot from aboard the Starry Knight. Some of these Prowlers would be lost during the Battle of Sayoba, including the UNSC Ghost Star and the Starry Knight itself. Spartan John 117 and his unit used the Starry Knight's nuclear self-destruct feature to prevent the Covenant from capturing sensitive data within the downed Prowler. The Point Blank class Prowler entered service in 2520. They had a length of 1,591 feet or 485 meters. They have a mass of 1.1 million tons, and they have one Mat Cannon, five Shiva Nukes, four Sentry Auto Cannon turrets, 80 Archer missile pods, and 20 Rampart Point defense guns. The Point Blank class Prowlers are versatile ships designed to be used as long-range motherships for smaller Prowler complements on long strategic missions away from human space, or as command posts for UNSC planning staff operating on the front lines. The point of no return served as a wartime strategic command and control platform for the Office of Naval Intelligence. The Sahara-class Heavy Prowler entered service in 2520. They had a length of 922 feet or 281 meters. They had a mass of 71,000 tons. They had two Mato non-linear pulse cannons, one Shiva nuke, and eight Hornet mine dispersal racks. These became the most common and well-known class of prowlers. Each of the three squadrons of Task Force Yama were led by heavy prowlers. In 2553, after the Human Covenant War, the Sahara-class prowler UNSC Port Stanley was used as transportation for the Office of Naval Intelligence Black Ops team known as Kilo-5. The Winter Class Prowler entered service in 2549. They had a length of 270 feet or 84.2 meters. They had a mass of only about 907 tons. They had two coil guns, one moray mine rack, and three backstop point defense lasers. One Winter Class Prowler was stationed aboard the research vessel Argent Moon as an evacuation vessel for ERNI personnel. However, the crew of the Argent Moon were killed in a bioweapon accident in 2557. When Spartan II Blue Team traveled to Argent Moon to prevent ONI intelligence from falling into the hands of Julem Dama's Covenant, the Spartans used a winter-class prowler to evacuate the Argent Moon after they overloaded its reactors as their pelican had been destroyed. The ship would eventually be abandoned by the Spartans on the outer colony of Meridian. The Spirit of Fire was a colony ship that was commissioned in 2473, transporting colonists as well as equipment such as hydroponics, atmospheric generators, and prefabricated schools in the UNSC's expansion efforts. During this period, the Spirit of Fire was directly involved in setting up infrastructure for the colony of Arcadia. It was refitted for military service in 2531. It had a length of 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters. It had a mass of 44 million tons, and it participated in the Harvest Campaign and the first battle of Arcadia. It was lost with all hands in 2534. Somehow they would find their way to the Ark, where they would find Atriox and his banished. Thank you all for sticking to the end. With TikTok's shutdown imminent, I feel that YouTube will be the place where I fall back to. If that does happen, I'll be making more long form content. Please do let me know if this is a video style that you'd like to see more of. You have a great day.